Good morning from Big Sky Country and happy 4th of July. Hope you all are enjoying a nice long weekend and spending some time with friends and family. We spent yesterday going out of town and then we came back into town and immediately went to my son's house to have a barbecue with his family. We got our family time in. We're gonna be spending our 4th of July doing yard work first thing in the morning because I don't know about where you're at, but here in Montana, it's been very hot. <laughs> been up in to the high 90s the last couple of days so we try to get everything done first thing in the morning it is now about six in the morning and I'm gonna film this and then as soon as it hits eight o'clock I'm gonna go out and start mowing we figured we'd at least wait until eight so our neighbors didn't get too mad at us <laughs> so I'm gonna try to get this done today hopefully get it out by tomorrow that's my plan so the topic today, I was originally going to do a video on how having a BrickLink store is a business. And I had some ideas on things I wanted to discuss. Yesterday, while we were traveling, I was scrolling through the Facebook BrickLink Buyers and Sellers group, which I seem to scroll through a lot lately. And I came across a post that was a little confusing at first. And basically what it was is that a buyer had placed an order in a store. She noticed that there was a $7 fee and she wasn't sure what that was for. So she wrote email back to the seller to find out what these fees were because her order wasn't really that much. It was like 20 parts. He responded, but he responded as though she was a different buyer and he was very rude in his response. So she was a little taken aback by that. She started to get a little bit more into it and started to look in her store. And she did not mention the name of the store. Somebody else went and figured out who it was and put the name of the store in the link. And I'm not gonna mention the name of the store in this video either. You'll have to do your own research. That's why I'm not even gonna show you the post from Facebook. You'll have to go find all this information on your own. What I am gonna show you is this store's terms and conditions. And this is why it's very, very important that you read the terms and conditions before you buy from a store, before you even start putting stuff in your cart, you need to go read those terms and conditions. And this will be why. And I'm gonna be reading from my tablet a little bit. So if I'm looking down, that's why. I'm not being rude, I'm trying to make eye contact. <laughs> this store, it starts out with, attention, please read our store terms before you proceed with a purchase as you will miss important fees. So everybody has their own way of running their store. I've said this before, that's the great thing about BrickLink is that anybody can run the store however they want. This store, definitely has a unique way of running their store. A lot of stores will have a minimum lot fee. Some will have this whole thing of so many parts and so many lots and, and that's fine. They'll have shipping and handling fees. Maybe they'll add a little bit extra to the shipping charges to cover packaging. All of that is fine. I've seen all of those before. I have just never seen this. And what it is, is they charge a fee for per part. So if you order less than 10 parts, you don't have a fee. If you order 11 to 49 parts, there's a $5 fee. For 50 to 99 parts, there's a $10 fee. For 100 to 199 parts, a $20 fee. And orders with more than 200 parts is a $40 fee. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but most of my orders, I think my average for parts on an order is about 75. I would be charging these people a $10 fee to pull a 75 part order. And a lot of times, if they're getting that many parts, they're getting multiples. So I'm not even pulling that many lots, but they're basing this on parts. They have these additional fees. So, okay, that's the way they wanna do it, that's fine. You keep going and they have parts special notes. And this is the one that my husband was and I were just beyond beside ourselves on because it clearly says 
I clean parts upon your request before I ship them. They sell used parts and they're not even bothering to clean them. Now, I know I've said this in my sorting video that I don't clean every part, but unless I, I notice that there's a smell or parts are especially dirty, then I will go ahead and clean them. As I'm going through and putting them into inventory, if the part is dirty in any way, shape or form, it gets tossed to the side and it goes through the washing process. So it may not be that I'm doing a bulk mass wash of these parts, but I'm sure as hell not, oh, I'm sorry, sure as heck not selling parts that are dirty. I'm not gonna send you a part that I know is dirty and I could take the time to wash. But that's just me. Like I said, everybody runs their store differently. The other part of that was we sell all sorts of parts of different ages so they could be discolored or yellowed. I pull out parts that are yellowed or discolored or faded or don't even quite match the colors that are in there. You know, because you do get those weird, especially with the reddish browns, you'll get those weird kind of off. It's not really reddish brown and it's not brown. I'll put those aside. I won't even sell those because I've had people say, oh, you sent me a brown or you sent me a reddish brown. It's like, well, it's really neither. I don't even sell those. <laughs> so I'm a little shocked that they would purposely put yellowed parts into their inventory. They do say that if it's cracked or broken, they'll make a note of it in their store. So I guess that's something. Some more on this. This is not all of it. This is probably the longest terms and conditions I've seen. I thought mine was long. This guy's got me beat. <laughs> so <laughs> the next one was the order cancellation. They no longer accept order cancellations. And he even puts it in nice bold terms. We will no longer cancel orders due to buyers not reading our store terms. So make sure you read their store terms. So after we have all those fees, so you're paying for parts, you're paying for a part fee based on how many parts you're getting. On top of that, they also have a 5% processing fee. So as I was going through and trying to figure out on one of my orders, how much it would cost this one of my buyers if I had all these fees, I, I got a little lost on this 5% processing fee because I'm not sure if they meant 5% on the order total or you know on the parts total the order total with the shipping and believe it or not there's more additional fees but we'll get to those in a minute it's very clear that if you do not pay because you didn't read their terms and conditions and you don't like all these fees if you they won't cancel They'll go through the, the non-paying buyer process. You'll have that ding on your record because they will not ex accept any excuses. You either pay all their fees or you get a non-paying buyer. The next thing was their feedback policy. And I did a whole video on feedback policy and it was probably one of my longest videos because it's, it is such a big topic. This person clearly believes in retaliatory feedback. The reason I say this is because he has it clearly in his terms. He's going to retaliate. Please do not buy from us. Then leave a neutral negative feedback after your order is received because you do not like the charges and this will result in an automatic negative complaint from us. So if you try to warn other buyers that, hey, you're going to be paying a lot of fees, he's going to leave you a negative. And this is clearly retaliatory. And I'm not sure how this person is still in business, but they are. There's also in the terms and conditions that you have 24 hours after you receive the package to respond if you have an issue with the order. I have an order that I have not opened yet because I'm saving it for a Lego haul and I've had it for nearly a month. And I've had a lot of people respond to my orders and say, hey, look, I'm sorry, I haven't had a chance to order this. I ordered it today or I opened it today and noticed a part was missing or something was broke or whatever. And it could be a month later. People do not have time as soon as that package comes in to open it and double check it, especially if it's a big order. You know, if you have a four or 500 part order, you're not going to 
have the time to be able to go through that in a 24 hour period if you have a family and a job. So I'm a little shocked by that. You have exactly 24 hours to get back to them once you receive it. The other charges, because there's more charges, they do exact shipping, which is really nice. But if you continue to read through their shipping, it says that they do charge flat fees for both handling, which is a dollar, and packaging, which is a dollar. So you have another $2 on top of all your other fees, like the part fee, the 5% processing, and now you have this. As I was reading through this, because <laughs> I didn't even notice this my first time through, they do try to ship out orders within one to three days, but they only ship out on Tuesdays and Thursdays but not on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, unless a special case comes up. So basically, they're telling you, we'll ship in one to three days as long as it falls with it on a Tuesday or Thursday when they're gonna be shipping. So that's just some of the stuff that's in his terms and conditions. And I sat down and figured it out. I had an order come in from a regular customer and he ordered, I believe, 34 parts and it was $4.20. So I went through and started adding all these additional fees and it came up to $14.69 by the time I was done. That's not including that 5% processing fee because I don't know what that's based on. If it's based on just the parts, if it's based on the parts and the shipping, parts shipping fees, I don't know. So the 5% on this little order can be anywhere from 21 cents to 73 cents. Could be anywhere in between. So this is why I always recommend reading the terms and conditions. This is an extreme case. I have seen a lot that try to have those little hidden fees that you really don't know about, but this just blew me away. My husband and I, like I said, we read this like two or three times because we were totally shocked. On the Facebook post, part of the communication that was going on that the poster had talked about was the fact that apparently the store got into a disagreement with a buyer because the buyer apparently asked how they ship things. And this store does not use bubble wrap or bubble mailers. I would not buy from them. <laughs> I don't know about anybody else, but if I got parts that were just in a regular envelope, they're going to be smushed. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. And as a seller, if I have parts that I think might even break or poke through a bubble mailer, I'll put them into a box, even if it ends up costing me more on shipping because they've done instant checkout. I do everything I can to make sure that they get the parts safely and not broken. So I'm not sure why he's charging a dollar for packaging if he's not even using bubble mailers or bubble wrap. I guess you're paying for just a flat envelope. It, it just, I, every time I think about it, it just blows my mind and my husband and I have been talking about this for like 24 hours because we're just, we're just shocked that somebody would charge all of this. Like I said, I kind of went back and forth on whether or not I even wanted to discuss this particular store. This is a prime example of stores that hurt BrickLink, that really give BrickLink a bad name because if you have a new buyer come in and they hit this store first, I would be worried that they wouldn't, the buyer wouldn't take the time to go and look at some other stores. I really do feel like it's stores like this that kind of hurt BrickLink. I don't even know why they have a store. They don't seem happy with what they're doing. I haven't even gotten into the feedback that he's left for people that is very hostile. And I talked about that in my store. It's like, I won't buy from stores that seller is being hostile or is being even more negative in their negative comments. And the fact that he just flat out says, I'm gonna leave you a negative. If you leave me a neutral, I'm leaving you a negative, period. Doesn't matter why. The fact that you don't read his store terms and conditions, that's your fault. I have a pretty elaborate store terms and conditions. Again, another video that I've done. And mine is pretty long. It kind of covers everything that I've had come up in the five years I've been doing this. So it is kind of long, but I, I don't think that it comes across as being hostile like this one does or 
like I'm out for to get every penny I can. <laughs> At least I don't think so. <laughs> like I said, it's just, I, I don't even know what to say at this point about this. <laughs> I just wanted to share this with you because I was just extremely shocked. I completely get that every store is different. You're going to run it a little bit differently. You're going to have your own way of doing things. And that's what makes BrickLink unique. But it is things like this that really drive me crazy because they're like trying to make money off of parts because they aren't making enough on the parts themselves. I don't, I don't understand the logic. And like my husband said, $5 fee to pull 40 parts, it takes like five minutes to pull 40 parts. It doesn't take that long. If you're organized and you have a system, it shouldn't take that long to pull parts. So basically, once again, just read those terms and conditions. Be very careful when you go into a store. I have had people that I know don't read my terms and conditions. They'll come back and ask me to do something that clearly I state in my terms and conditions I won't do. I have never thrown that back in their face. I've never said, oh, you didn't read my terms and conditions or that's in my terms and conditions. Go look. I don't even bring that up. All I do is say, okay, you know, I made a mistake. Here's what I'm willing to do to rectify that mistake. I don't give it any excuses as to why that, why the mistake might have happened. I don't say, oh, I had a bad week. I had a migraine. You know, I was tired that morning when I did that. Nothing. I just send them an email and say, sorry, this is what I'm going to do to rectify the situation. Again, I apologize and I send it off. And I don't throw back that, hey, you didn't read my terms and conditions. You know, this is not how I run my store. None of that. I try to do whatever I can to make the customer happy. This person seems like they're almost trying to antagonize the situation. And he does have quite a few neutral and a couple of negative, obviously, for these charges. But... If you go in and look at the feedback this person left, he has left probably 10 times as many negative feedbacks as he's received as a seller. So it's shocking. <laughs> Two things that I always look at when I go into a store before I start shopping is I look at their terms and conditions to make sure that I am willing to pay the extra fees or make sure that there isn't any hidden costs that I'm not aware of. And then I also look at their feedback, but more importantly, I look at how they respond to negative and neutral feedback. And just based on those two things, this is one store I would avoid. Like I said, I'm not going to name the store because I'm not here to really shame. This is more about making sure that you read the terms and conditions. His is extreme, but you will find that there are stores that have one or two of these fees. I've never seen a store do all of them. <laughs> I guess that's what's shocking. And, and just how negative the terms and conditions sound toward the buyer. Like they expect you to be a negative buyer which is odd to me. It's like, I, I expect all my buyers are going to be happy and nice and they're happy to be here because Lego is such a happy product that <laughs> you would expect them to be happy. Okay, so I have rambled on long enough. I'm really hoping I can condense this <laughs> when I go to edit it. Again, I want to thank everybody who has taken the time to watch my videos and especially taken the time to do a thumbs up, leave a comment, or subscribe. I made the comment last week that, oh, I'm so happy I have 75 subscribers and I'm now a week later um, up to 93 subscribers. So it's been a pretty exciting week for me because it's like, oh, look, they like my videos, <laughs> which is I know it's silly, but I have to get going. I can see my husband. I keep looking out this way because I can see my husband working in the yard and I know he's out there grumbling <laughs> that I'm in here doing a video. So I have got to get going, but I do want to wish you all the best today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.